project you guys are going on in the sixth ward right now or some other things you got going on that's there? the biggest project that we have going on right now we just completed over a 20 million dollar project at the corner of Shoto and Jefferson which is the brand new headquarters for the sheet metal workers union mm -hmm. um, sheet metal workers basically what they do is the indoor duct work for commercial and residential buildings this is a state-of-the-art headquarters you gotta go see it if I told you about it you wouldn't really believe <laughs> it but it's the building with the largest wind turbines on the outside um, mm -hmm. solar energy solar power throughout the entire building building, um, rain gardens in the parking lots. I mean, it's just really a great building and it really talks about the advancement of sustainable technology yes. here in our city and that's right in the Sixth Ward. Wow, so you got some exciting things going on in the Sixth Ward. We are very blessed in the Sixth Ward. And I know that means a lot to you because a lot of, some, for those who don't know, that you were born and raised in the Sixth right. Ward, right? Right, you know, it's such a privilege and it's really such an honor to be able to represent the community that I grew up in as a child. You know, this is where I learned to ride a bike. You know, the big adventure <laughs> was walking to the corner store yeah. and being able to represent that community at City Hall. It's such an honor and I'm so grateful for the residents of the Sixth Ward who voted me in. Oh, wow. How did you make the transition, though? I mean, because you're so young it's not I mean that's unusual so motivated I, yeah <laughs> but I mean know. politics is not something that every young kid thinks this right. is what I'm gonna do right and I think it's so important and that's why I always give the credit you know to the the residents who took a chance on me you know at the age of 26 I had come back from working in Washington DC and finally realized that this is something that I could do that I have a desire to serve and um, when the seat became open I decided to quit my job and, and run full term what were you doing before to that? be elected um, I was working for a member of Congress okay okay at the time so I've always been involved in politics and that's what I tell young people you know that if you have a dream you have a desire start working towards that dream because you never know when the right opportunity may come and you can't be scared you got to go through that door when that door opens. And so that's what I did. And how have the people in the Sixth Ward embraced you and the work that you've done in the last five years? It's been really great. You know, there are always challenges. You know, being young, um, being a female, being an African-American, th there always are going to be challenges. And what I tell a lot of people, because I speak to a lot of young women about running for office, is just make sure your game is tight and do the very best that you can do. And I think people appreciate you being sincere and being genuine. When your heart is there and when your heart is really at the right place, people can see that and they believe in that and they trust you. Mm. What's a typical day like for you? Every day is different. Okay. <laughs> um, actually, today. That's why you love it. Right, right. You know, um, every day it, it's something different. You know, today I'm doing an interview with you guys, you know, which is really a privilege. That's the highlight of your day. Right, that's the that's highlight of the day. It's <laughs> over. Can't get any better than that. Right. After today, I'll be um, returning phone calls. I do a lot of return phone calls. I do a lot of meetings. Um, I, I meet with the business owners just to make sure that everything is okay in the ward. Every day is something new, it's something different, it's fresh. Hmm. So, so you talked about the things that were going on that are exciting. What are the biggest obstacles in the Sixth Ward? I mean, we talked about the Imagine School District closing. I mean, so what are the obstacles that you're facing right now? Right, you know, and I think the obstacles aren't um, just limited to the Sixth Ward, but really to the entire city of St. Louis. Um, our city is experiencing an economic recession, just like a, lo a lot of other urban metropolitan areas. You know, our school district is definitely a detriment to the success, the potential success of our city. You know, Imagine was one of the largest charter schools in the area. And because their sponsor, I believe it was Missouri Baptist, has decided to no longer sponsor that charter school, we now have, you know, hundreds of students that, and parents that will be looking for... 3,500. 3,500, okay. 3,500 students looking for a new home right. by the fall. Yeah, and so that, that's a challenge. You know, it's a challenge when you have an unaccredited school district. It's a challenge when you bring in new companies and new jobs like Green Street, what they have been able to do if you don't have an educated workforce to be able to work in those jobs. So um, it's very, very important that we really get our school district together so that we have educated kids who can be able to, to be elected officials long after I'm gone, to be able to you know, manage police departments and manage you know, Fortune 500 companies. That's very important. It definitely sounds like there's a lot of work to do as far as that's concerned and trying to manage and move so many kids in, you know, between now and the next uh, beginning of the next school year in the fall. So a lot of work is, a, is, a, is up and coming. Right. A lot of work is up and coming. And I think what you're going to start seeing right now is St. Louis public schools. They're going to be making a push to attract those students, existing charter schools. And so, you know, parents, you know, they will have to make the decision about where they feel their child fits best. Oh, wow. 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 Thank well, you. That's, that's good information to know, a lot of good information to know. And there's a lot more coming up right here on uh, St. Louis Presents right here on SCL TV. If you didn't know, not only is Casey a uh, alderman, oh. 
but she is also uh, a radio host. Yeah. And she has a show and we're going to talk. Speaker. Uh, and, oh, and a yeah. speaker. A professional speaker. Yeah, we're going to talk about that when we get back. Okay. Yeah, we're going to talk more about that right here on St. Louis Presents right here on STL TV after the break. Because what you're about is service. So any area of service, and what you'll find to answer your question, actually, Rob, is that, and tell me if, I, if you agree, Casey, that when it all falls in line with the purpose of your life and the purpose of your mission and the vision that you have for your life, even if it takes a few more hours right. in a day, it's such a joy. Right. It doesn't feel like hard work. Right. And you, just, you just keep rolling. Exactly. And it's a blessing to be able to have a radio show. I'm mm -hmm. sure you guys can understand. It's a blessing to be yes. able to have a TV show mm -hmm. on STL TV. You know, you get to, to talk to a lot of folks. Um, and a lot of times people don't realize that there are some burdens that come with those blessings. Mm -hmm. So I may not be able to, you know, go out and, and you know, hang out or, or sleep as much as I would like to. Um, but just think about the impact that you are having on people's lives. And, you know, this is the season to go out and do that so that's how I look at it wow. what do you what's the message that you want to leave behind what's the legacy you want to leave behind for people oh that's a really good question April um, if anything I, I hope that um, people first of all understand that I love God and that God loves them too mm -hmm. you know that's really important um, but also about knowing who you are and being the very best person that you can be um, and I hope that people will look back and say, you know, Casey was a great example of that. Wow. So, again, uh, we can catch your show on 690 AM at what, what day, what time? Every Wednesday at 3 o'clock. You do not want to miss this show. We have great guests. It's like an encouraging weekly wow. fill-up. It's in the middle of the week. You want to tune in. It is fun. We have a lot of contemporary topics. It's about faith, but it's about, you know, overcoming challenges through your faith. I'm telling you, if you listen to the show, your life will be changed. Okay. And then obviously you can go to her website at www.inspiredoverflow.com. And of course you can see her in the sixth ward doing everything that an older man or older woman is supposed to do. Casey Star <laughs> thank, thank you for so coming on the show. Much. Appreciate Good it. Luck to you guys. Our very first thank guest you. on thank our you. show. Uh, as we started the show earlier, we were in the kitchen with uh, Joy Gridnick Christensen from uh, Fountain, on the, uh, well, Fountain on Locust. And we're going to talk a little bit about what she does. Joy, what's going on over there? I'm getting ready to make the best chocolate shake in St. Louis. Watch out. I just want to say watch out. Watch out? <laughs> what, so what's